Oh, hello. I'm back from more of my licensed game shenanigans to look at a couple of games that are both oh, very old and they are also very new because they just were dropped in terms of uh, making them playable for people in the modern day. Because what we're looking at, as you can already see, is um, some LCD handhelds from different companies at different points in the Star Trek franchise history. Well, from the 90s when <laughs> LCD handhelds were actually a thing. But yeah, we're going to look at a couple of these because I helped... They were, they were made by a developer called Detizo. What you're seeing here is a page on his H.io developer uh, site. Uh, and the games are both um, going to be playable in the browser, but they uh, and they were made by Atizo primarily. But I pitched in, in terms of, uh, I provided some materials like scans and video footage for, you know, getting the gameplay simulation correct. Um, I, I, what else did I do? I did little bits. Testing, I guess, is the, a big one, too. I, I'll test the games usually before we release these. But, yeah, Atizo is the main developer. So all credit to Atizo. He does amazing work. Uh, and I, I have been helping him make a bunch of different games for years. Uh, we started off with some Simpsons games. Uh, and we, we've we done some Star Trek because we're both Star Trek fans. We've done something else. We did a Peter Pan and the Pirates game, if you ever heard of that old Fox show. Uh, but, yeah, so now we're, I'm going to be playing a couple of these because... Um, I've played them a whole bunch, and I think they're neat, so they're worth talking about here on this channel. So, yeah, Star Trek 25th Anniversary, that was a big marketing thing. The 25th Anniversary, um, actually, outside of the realm of video games, I have no idea what they were doing for 25th Anniversary. I know 25th Anniversary because there were a bunch of different games from different companies, and they were all different genres. So it was like... You know, the, the owners of Star Trek were looking for develop companies to make games based on this, on on the original series. That's Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. They're on the cover. And, yeah, they just found a bunch of different companies to make various games that all evoke this original series era. So here this, in this LCD handheld, some basic details. Uh, it's by Konami. It's uh, from 1991. We have some details here at the bottom about... Um, well, it's basically the manual, kind of explaining what the game is. You can go to this. I'll link to all these different things um, that I'm talking about. You can just go, go there yourself. Because you should also play these. I should say that. I'm going to play a little bit. But really, I really just hope people who watch this think like, oh, I want to play that. And they'll just go play it. So uh, let's, just, let's click play because I forgot I am on not the fastest internet. And this is loading off the internet. So I hope it does not take too long to load. I could have been... Could have been loading while I was talking. But it looks like it's almost done. Now, I'm just going to spoil the fact that this is my favorite of the two games we're going to look at. Uh, I think it's a really solid effort by Konami. I think it's really creative in how they utilize the, the limited graphics, because that's always an issue with LCD handhelds, is you can only fit so many visuals on one of these screens. Like, you know, they're small screens. So... I think they were really clever in how they use the the different graphic pieces for the different game modes, which we'll we'll get into in a second. Um, I want to switch the background. This background's nice. Uh, actually, it's I usually just leave it on this this background t category because Atizo always has cool little models and stuff in the background. But given that this is Star Trek, we're talking about, uh, I think this is the more appropriate background. So yeah, there's that. Uh, there's Manual, of course. Uh, I think this, and yeah, he uh, reformatted this from the box. The like the packaging itself had the the instructions on it, so he had to reformat it a bit. But but there you go. There's instructions, which is critical. So many of these LCD handhelds, um, you you can figure it out on your own without a manual. But who boy, <laughs> the manual just makes things so much easier to understand and and to understand the objective like what it is the player is trying to do so the manual sometimes is very critical and he includes the manual for all of these that's that's he's very thorough about that too so the manual the packaging here you can you can kind of flip these things around you can poke at it in 3d space you know see what the original uh version of this thing would have been like like at least when you picked it up off the store shelf that's what it would have would have looked like uh what else can we do we can adjust our settings. So if you want the original black and white sort of visuals, it's, it's the original. But something else Atiza always does, which is 
uh, just amazing to me. It's always been one of the coolest things to me about how he creates these simulations. He updates the graphics, and you'll it'll it'll be very clear in a moment that this is not the original LCD handheld visuals because it looks uh, it looks really nice and, in my opinion, better than the original. Like I think at the time, if they could have color graphics like this, they would have they would have done it for sure. Some some oh I should make note of the uh, controls. So use the arrows or WASD, and then what what is it? it oh, it's control. Uh, so the basics are uh, F one to start. Ma arrow keys and control okay and there's another shortcut i should remember but i always forget i think it's zoom in there it is so you can emulate this in the main emulator the problem with that version is it doesn't have the voices they could not emulate the like the voice chip so a bunch of the sound you're going to be hearing here is because we had I recorded video with the sound effects, and then he incorporated... Alright, so now we can fire the torpedo. Oh! We got a hit. Right, so this is level one, which means it's pretty simple. So we blew up a ship, and now we have to beam some people off this planet by kind of orbiting around, and then press, pressing the, the action button to beam them off. And then we have to beam up 17 people before the time runs out. So we're doing that now. And of course you're dodging these uh, missiles or quantum torpedoes. That's... So all the voices you're hearing, none of that is in the main emulated version. So that's why, that's what makes this really, really special. And why I, I really appreciate Atizo's focus on like you know making the simulation as, as good as it can be because yeah emulation sometimes just even though it should you know it's it's well first of all emulation also allowed me to play this game <laughs> repeatedly so i'm thankful for, for to the main team and anyone involved for for that work very good work but yeah missing the sound effects missing the voices it is a special part of this game so having them in this version i ran out of time I spent too much time talking. Oh, uh, well, now you get to see what it's like when you when you fail this the second half of the of the of the game. Uh, I'll try one more time. Score of sixteen twenty, pretty weak, I gotta say. Yeah, another issue I had with the I I, I own the handheld version too, which I should have probably had handy as a prop here. But in the original, it, the original's worse. Like the physical original hand handheld has these like delays in the input between your input and the action taking place and that makes it harder like annoyingly harder to the point where that's where i did fall back on the emulated main version because that one well is playable <laughs> frankly <laughs> compared to the original handheld the main one's better than so if you were to rank these original handheld with the on the physical device that's the worst Mame is in the middle because it plays well but it's missing the voices and this version, Atizo's simulation, has everything, and it works great. Uh, and I've verified this myself because I have played every single version uh, of this game. All right, let's let's start over. I, I won't play through the whole thing uh, in this video. I'll just at least try to get past that first level, level one. <laughs> I love that one voice. I think it's really funny. The guy who says, "That's not logical," because. Is that meant to be Spock? That does, not, does not sound like Spock. Sounds like some other Vulcan. All right, let's see if we can blow this guy up real quick. No, missed that one. So if one of the missiles, I'll, I'll let one of them hit me. Every time one of them hits, you will lose a random element of your ship. Like I lost, bri what does bridge do? I, can, I already forgot what, what happens if your bridge is gone, but but yeah, the, the idea is that the more hits you take, the more uh, functionality you lose. Oh, I'm, I'm just trying not to... Oh, I forgot to heal. That's what the Spock uh, icon means. When Spock pops up in the corner, that's the chance to heal up. All right, I should pay more attention because uh, this is how I lost before. Oh, that, that was way off. Yeah, the time... Oh, that's two hits. What do I lose this time? Shield. 
Oh, I forgot to heal again. You can see there, I lost a shield, which means I, I'm down to one shield piece instead of two, which does make things more challenging. Oh man, we're Spock, I need to heal. Come on, Spock. Oh, there, we healed. So we have our shield back, that's good. And I'm, I'm not even trying to blow this guy up. I should be doing something here. It's just, the timing's... Oh, I got it. They blocked my shot. It's not magical. I'm trying. So the, the way to play this section really is to try to anticipate where the ship's going to go. Fire, fire, fire. No. Oh. oh, we did it. Okay, cool. All right, so this time, let me try to actually, like, really the, the trick here is just spam the button. I know it's not logical. Yeah. Uh, apparently I cannot talk and uh, focus. So let me focus for a moment just so I can complete this stage at least. So if you only have like two bars, you can only beam out one person. If you wait for uh, more bars, you can beam out two at a time. I think it's five bars. Oh, uh, I took a hit. I think you have five hits before you, you're dead here. So we're doing all right. Five more people. But that timer runs out real quick. Two more people. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. We did it. Okay, so that was... That was a stage completed. Oh man. I'm sweating. It's, it's, it's summertime. Now you know when I recorded this video. I would usually have my fan going, but uh, fan noise does not come through well on a microphone. Uh, well, you get the idea. Let's see if we can blow up one more ship before I... See, now that we're in level 2, you have to blow up more ships. So th you, that gives you the basics. Basically, the timers get shorter, there are more enemies per, per round, per level, and then that's how the difficulty increases up to four levels, I think? Pretty sure. Do you hear that airplane? It's huge. It's very loud. Right above me. Uh, okay, well, that's Star Trek 25th Anniversary. I won't try to uh, go much further, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a really good game. I think it, uh, you, you've already seen how the, the circle of the you know, the ship disc also doubles as like the planet itself and they just change out the graphics and visuals. And you're seeing a Tezos graphics here, like none of that would be in the original game. But um, in fact, I think I could just switch out graphics on the fly if you want to get a sense of what that's like. There it is. So that the main thing really seems to be that the the, the, the filling is, is missing, right? All you get with these LCD handhelds is outlines and, the, and then you just see the background through the ship, for example. But, um, but, and yeah, that's, I think that's it. That's all there, I need to say about this game. I think it's great. Uh, and that's only one of two, because now we're going to go over to Star Trek First Contact. That's the second Star Trek game we worked on recently, or that Atizo made, and I helped uh, with some contributions. This one's from 1996. Obviously, uh, marketing, uh, as part of the marketing for the movie Star Trek First Contact. So that's what we're getting here. The last, the previous game, we were fighting the Klingons. Now we're fighting the Borg. And I'll tell you right now, this game's, well, I already spoiled that it. it's the least, less interesting ver Star Trek game of these two for me. Uh, it is very repetitive. It doesn't have a narrative, really. It just kind of repeats ad nauseum, right? There's no, like, I don't know. There's no, there's no ending, it, seemingly. And in order to achieve, in order to, you know reach later levels you have to get such high scores and i just re we we did our best but I, I i'll tell you like yeah it's it's not the most interesting game the most interesting aspect of it and i think atizo mentioned this too is the design of the the hardware in fact i i should just click play so we can get this thing installing but um but yeah we did we did it <laughs> i have it and we and Atizo did all the work of develop, you know, getting the game working, and I took all the, got all the assets and stuff. 
Oh, not, not just me, actually. Instructions came from Stud33 Heisman. Uh, packaging from eBay, as always. The good people at eBay who upload a bunch of photos for old things that are hard to find. And textures from TrekCore. Oh, I love that site. I follow them on Tumblr. Uh, what's happening? There it is. <laughs> it took a moment. Uh, but yeah, this, this, the design of like the, the you know, the hardware itself, the, the shell is the more interesting part because this top thing here, it is reflective. Like if you look at the original, it's like a mirror, basically. It's like a shiny reflective material. And then all the, you can see the, the controls are once again, very basic. The mode, the mode just makes it more difficult, but you don't need that. Yeah. You, you don't need it to be more difficult. I, I don't think it makes the game more fun at all to, to do that. Let's look at the instructions real quick. It's just a sheet of paper, right? Yeah. It's pretty simple. But yeah. We didn't talk about who made this micro games of America, who I know because they worked on some of the goosebumps LCD handhelds I looked at a while back. So I was familiar with the name before this, this project. Uh, all right. Well, that's the instructions packaging, uh, usual sort of blister pack style. So you can, they can show off the, the thing. You can see some screenshots in the back of the box there showing you some of the gameplay. We're going to be fighting a whole lot of board cubes. That's the, the packaging makes it obvious. And we are definitely going to be doing that. All right, let's leave it on retrofab graphics or screen art. What am I doing? It's, it's left, right, and then control for attack. And then we're going to hit F1 to play game one. And then we're going to zoom in. No voices in this one. So that also makes it less neat than the, the previous game we looked at. The objective is to just shoot cubes forever. <laughs> this is like a horrible time, quantum time loop thing. The Enterprise just sits there, destroying board cubes for forever. And you have three lives. So I've already lost two. I forgot I can just hold the button, too, so... And that's three lives. Alright, let's, let's try one more time. So it's three positions, left, right, middle. Uh, you're just blowing up board cubes. Like that. And that's it. You're looking at it. Aren't you enjoying this game? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just tough. It's really tough. What, I mean, that's just part of what I do here is I look at, you know, different games based on different franchises and licenses. And then when you see a good one, you're like, oh, this is great. It's like, like 25th anniversary. That was a great game. And then you look at, you have to compare it to something like this, which didn't have to. It, that's just how it worked out. <laughs> we decided to do both of these sort of back to back. Or Tizo decided to go for it. And um, yeah, it just, uh, it makes, it's a very stark contrast. Like this is not, I'll just say it. I mean, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> this is not a fun game. It's, I, I guess if you're bored in the back of a car and you're a kid, this is something you can do. 10 points per kill is ridiculous. You you don't advance to the next level till you get 1,000 points. And um, yeah, that's honestly, that's all I need to show off here. Once again, I'll link to this. So if anyone wants to play it, some more, spend more time with it, you're free to do that. But yeah, I just, it's not as good. It's, it's, repetitive uh the scoring system's out of whack i think they did that just to and because again there are levels but the scores that are that are required are so high that no no one's going to go for it i mean you have to have focus and like eight hour well, like an eight at an eight hour car trip to to find the focus and time to be willing to go through this because there are just much much better games especially by 96 by 96 uh, man, I don't know if there are any Star Trek games for Game Boy, but I feel like, man, I would rather have a Game Boy and then, I guess, any game other, that's not start this game. But uh, if there were a Star Trek game for Game Boy, I'd rather play that. Or, or if my parents, I guess, were cool, they would buy me a copy of 
Star Trek 25th anniversary. Wait, what? No. Pause. I wanted to pause and go back out to this mode. Let's let's go back to this background. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me see. I don't think I checked that. I'm just curious wh which background he used, uh, or if he used the same ship for the background in this for this game. Let's see. Because it would be no. See, <laughs> yeah. He, he, I guess he couldn't find the model of the Enterprise. It's not even the Enterprise D. Because re remember, this is the. Wait. Yes, this is Star Trek: First Contact. The second movie featuring the next generation crew which means that the enterprise d from the tv show was destroyed in the last movie generations so this is the enterprise e so not the fan favorite it's not the one most people would remember i guess it, oh i mean if you like the movies you'll remember it but but yes what what no i didn't want to do that i wanted to do this but here we go this is the this is the more fun one of the two i'm just gonna put that judgment call out there uh, I really enjoy this game, and it again, it has an ending. It has four levels, and then you can actually reach the an ending to the experience. Uh, but if you want to replace something that's just kind of repetitive forever, you can play First Contact. But that's it. I wanted to show these two off. Uh, as always, I think they're really uh, amazing uh, projects that Itizo takes on. I'm going to show you his page if you haven't been there yet. Itizo itch.io. I'll link to this as well. He makes all sorts of different games, original games, uh, there's prototypes, there's Game & Watch stuff. Uh, Retrofab is probably his biggest project because um, it's not just Star Trek and it's not just The Simpsons that I mentioned. It's a ton of games. So it, this is a Tizo. Uh, I don't know how many of these he owns. I know he, he does a lot of co collaborating with others. I think he does own some of the Game & Watch games, but, but yeah, he just takes a bunch of these old games and turns them into what you just saw. He he turns them into 3D simulations to give you the experience of what it was like to to look at this device. And then you, of course, as you saw, you can actually play the games themselves. There's all sorts of different like licenses and game series and companies in the mix. My internet's slow, so not, not all the graphics are loading. But but anyway, yes, you should check out Atizo's website. It, um, is just absolutely incredible. Here's one. Yeah, here's two we did. Peter Pan and the Pirates and The Simpsons Bart versus Homer Soros. Another game with voices, actually. I really like the uh, the voice games. I I'm sure it's very expensive to do that for an LCD handheld to have a voice chip, you know, in, in the device. But um, it, it definitely does enhance it. I can see. And I'm sure they charged more for that for that uh, feature set. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So that's... Uh, Star Trek 25th anniversary and Star Trek First Contact. Uh, check them out. They're fun. Yeah, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know what the next thing's going to be, but whatever it is, it'll be some funny, wacky licensed game thing as always. Uh, and until then, I'll see you.